Have you ever been playing Team Fortress 2 but then not wanted to play Team Fortress 2 and instead you've wanted to play Super Mario 64 but the pain of closing Team Fortress 2 and opening Super Mario 64 on your Nintendo Switch is just too much for you to handle well? I have a solution. I found a lot of maps that are themed after Super Mario 64 on the uh, the Team Fortress 2 workshop, on Game Banana, that type of thing, and they all look pretty cool. So in the spirit of me going through a bunch of random maps, I figured we'd do something a bit more themed this time, and uh, take a look at all of the Super Mario 64 maps that I could get my hands on in, uh, in Team Fortress 2. Alright, so of course we're going to start the, uh, the Super Mario 64 video off with the very first map, which is uh, bob on Battlefield. So unlike the other maps, which were just kind of made for fun, this one was actually made for the Saxton Hale game mode, so um, some of the features on this map, I guess, are designed accordingly. Uh, this is where Hale would spawn. Hale is a very angry medic in this case, just because I added a bot. Uh, the red team spawns all the way up on top of the mountain. Now, as cool as it would be for uh, the boss to spawn on top of the mountain and the, uh, the players to spawn down here, which is like how it works in uh, uh, Super Mario 64, I understand that if the Hale was able to like just do one super jump and get to everybody, it would not be a very fun map to play. So I'll run around the map here, but in the meantime, I want to talk about what I'm actually rating these maps on, because I don't want it to just be like an arbitrary rating system. Um, I'm basically... Because because there's like, when the people made this map, right, it's not like they had to think of the design. They literally just ported it and that was the end of the story. Um, what I will be judging it on, though, is how accurate the port is, as well as how well they integrated Super Mario 64 assets into Team Fortress 2. So one thing that I've, like, seen on this map that I think it does really well is, um, incorporating health and ammo packs into the places that coins normally were. Um, for instance, if you look over there, uh, that would normally be a red coin, but they have, uh, since replaced that with a, uh, medium health pack, which is kind of neat. And then if we run around this way up the mountain, um, you can actually see that the rows of coins that will come across are replaced with small health packs. So it's little details like that that I think really make these ports. Um, additionally, all of the warps work, uh, the mountain warp that like gets you from one tunnel to the other, as well as the flower tulip warp over here um, are all integrated. The only thing that I don't like about this map though is that it doesn't really, it feels kind of barren. They didn't include, like, any kind of enemies, any kind of, like, minor details that would be, even if they're static, like, minor details that would make this map uh, really cool. Um, I know on other Mario 64 maps that I've seen, like, for instance, this plank would move, um, and maybe I'm just, I, there are, there might be other versions of Super Mario 64's Bob on Battlefield out there, but this is the one that I think is the most common, so I wanted to, uh, do this one. But yeah, like, even the, uh, the pegs that you have to, like, ground pound over in this little section just aren't there so um this world like I understand that they had to exclude some stuff because they didn't want to make the Saxton Hale game mode too confusing, but it does feel a little static, I think is a great way to put it. Um, however, they did incorporate a lot of cool stuff like the uh, the thing over here being a control point, the coins being health packs and ammo packs. Um, it's just like, it's a pretty well done map, and they do have some stuff. I mean, this switch actually does open the door, and uh, it would kind of be nice if the cannons work, but again, I understand that like for the fun of the Saxton Hale game mode you don't want to make things too crazy um, so I was going to rate this like an 8 out of 10 however uh, why 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 would they do this put like a really low resolution like image of the person who created its profile picture I understand wanting to credit the creator I think it's cool that like if someone goes through a bunch of hard work they'd want to like add something that uh, shows that they're the original creator <laughs> Don't do this, though. This just looks so out of place, and, like, it kind of, like, negates all of the effort you went through making the map, because, like, now, the only thing people are gonna see is this. Um, this is, I think, yeah, this is Mario 64 BBB. I know there are other versions of this map, um, or even of, like, just the Saxton Hale map in general. They might have removed it here, but this is what I have on my computer. This is what I'm gonna judge it by, so this gets a 7 out of 10. Um, it, it works pretty well, it's just, like, there's a lot of minor things that I think could have been improved on. All right, now we're on to the second level of uh, Super Mario 64, which is Womp's Fortress. Um, one thing that I'm immediately noticing, and I don't know if this is just my imagination or if this is how it is in game, it feels like this map is a lot smaller. I know on the Saxton Hale map, like, the cannon that was there was about twice the size of me. Um, it doesn't look like they, oh no, they, oh wow. 
Okay, that's actually really cool. This one has some moving parts, but like, if you compare, I mean, like, the cannon's not even bigger than me, so... I don't know if it's like a positive or negative. I'd imagine that you'd want more, like I always talk about square footage on a map, but being able to run around is always nice. You obviously don't want maps to be too big, but this this does feel a little bit small. And um, yeah, here's the other thing too. The, the like flower patches were huge, but now I'm like, it's pretty, I look like a giant standing in the middle. So I wish they would have scaled this up. In terms of how well they recreated the original Super Mario 64 map, however, I mean, there are a lot of, like, moving parts, and, um, looks like this is where the blue team spawns, hello. Oh. <laughs> Unlike, um, the Bob on Battlefield, it looks like they have a nav mesh on here, because this bot actually doesn't really know what he's doing, but he knows how to move around, so, um, it's kind of neat that they would add bot functionality. It's kind of such a, uh niche thing, and it does look like the, uh, the Womps kill you. Okay, cool. But yeah, I really like the effort that they went through to, um, incorporate, like, minor stuff here. Like, the cannon works really well, actually. Holy crap. Um, maybe a little bit too well. I think it's supposed to shoot you up into that square, but, um, it, it's cool that they had it, like, go in and out of the hole. This just looks like they put a lot of effort into the minor details, which honestly, because, like, in a port, like, you're not doing a ton of work yourself. Um, I, I guess I, I should probably rephrase that. You're not doing a lot of design work yourself, so you have to, like, kind of get creative in the areas that you can, and, um, it really shows that the, uh, the creator of this map put an effort, so, um, yeah, even, like, this little plank works just as intended. Now, actually, being up here, it looks like the scaling issue that I was talking about actually is a thing, because this would normally be able to fit, like, five five to six coins on it, like, start to finish, but, um, this arrow platform is a little bit small. But yeah, I think the biggest strength of this map is that it's, like, a really well recreated port, and they obviously put a lot of, uh, attention to detail. The one thing that I wish they would have done, though, is make the map actually, like, I guess playable in a normal game at TF2. Right now, this looks like a tech demo, because if I was playing this on an actual server, number one, I mean, it is kind of small, but number two, there aren't any health or ammo packs anywhere, so I don't... <laughs> I think that would affect the playability quite a bit. This is almost the opposite of Bob on Battlefield, because they got, like, pretty much the opposite set of attention to detail, or they got all the moving parts, but they didn't integrate this in the TF2 basically at all. So, um, I'll give this, like, an 8 out of 10. I think it, it still is a really well-done and well-designed map, but, um... There are some apparent issues that, like, might make me think twice about running this on a trade server or something. Now, the only thing that would make me bump this up a point literally immediately is if they added the owl. But it doesn't look like they did, which is sad. Oh, also, this map, uh, I've, I've turned the volume down quite a bit so I can play my own music, but this map is playing the, uh, the default Bob on Battlefield theme, so it's kind of neat that they included that. So now I'm going to do Big Boo's Haunt. You might have noticed that we skipped a couple here. There is a Jolly Roger Bay map that exists. I could not find a download link to it anywhere. Um, I'll include a little, like, thing at the end, basically rating the videos that I've seen of it, but, um, yeah. We'll, we'll just, I'll do the ones that I could find, and if you, if I'm missing any, please let me know. I actually love these maps, but, um, one thing that I'm immediately noticing about Big Boo's Hot is that, um, this is not in the game normally. I think this is a really cool way, obviously it's like not 100% accurate to the port, but I think this is a really cool way to uh, incorporate a spawn room to actually make uh, the map playable, because holy crap, okay, that just immediately sends you to the uh, the top of the mansion, I'll have to keep that in mind. But yeah, they, um, they included two spawn rooms here, uh, that's pretty neat. As cool as it is to, like, spawn randomly in the map, again, if you want this to actually be playable on a server, because map maps are more than just tech demos, as much as the people don't want to admit it sometimes, um, th this does go a long way, and I, honestly, if I had my own trade server, I would probably add this to the map list just based on that, but, um, yeah, let's look around, let's see... Oh, wow, the signs are actually readable on this one, so this guy... See, this is how you do credits, right? Literally... This is, like, one of the most creative freaking integrations of your own credits that I've ever seen. I, I just, like, shout out to Litrona. I will I'll put your name on the screen for several seconds at a time just for being this creative. But, uh, anyway, yes. Uh, cool stuff. Let's go inside first, and then we'll check out the basement later. Um, this doesn't have the scaling issues either. This, it looks like I'm about as big as I should be, which is cool. Um, obviously I don't have, like, a Mario model that I can import to test it, but just intuitively, it looks 
looks fine, okay? It's like, the other ones looked big and small. This is, this is a good in-between. All of the rooms, I'm gonna guess they put all of them in here. And yeah, where the stars should be, they put like health packs. Um, I do kind of wish the door stayed open for a little bit longer because like, the animation playing means that if I'm like fighting somebody, it would be kind of annoying. Oh, these actually do damage. Okay, that's like, see that this is an appropriate amount of damage. 15 health per hit. This guy who made this thought of everything. Does this do anything? Does this just hurt me on contact? Oh, wow. Interesting. All right. Honestly, this is probably the most technically impressive thing that I've seen uh, on this map so far. The fact that they got this to, like, move around and everything is, like, really cool. I Honestly, though, props to the guy who made this for, like, not only having really good attention to detail, keeping playability in mind, but also, like, being a god at programming, apparently, because some of this stuff I would have no idea how to do. Um... Okay, that was a lot of screen shaking. But yeah, everything works as intended. Honestly, like, there's not one thing that I've seen so far that it's like, oh, I, I kind of wish they did this, other than, like, the, the very, very minor problem of the doors not closing in time. You also can run right through this, but obviously invisibility caps probably would be really hard to implement in TF2. Um, let me just see. Can I kill this guy by running around him? Oh, there's a spell book in here. That's really neat. So, if the- Okay! Alright, let's go to the top of the mansion now. Um, honestly, I don't expect there to be a whole lot up here that I'm not familiar with, because it looks like- Yeah, they even programmed the Big Boo, like, what? Oh, I guess he scares me. I'm not- I'm not scared of this ghost. This is, like, the most adorable-looking ghost ever. This is, like, barely more intimidating than, like, the default hat ghost in TF2. I can kind of see this mechanic getting annoying in, like, an actual match. Uh, there aren't really matches on this, but come on, if you don't try hard on a trade server, are you really human? This is honestly one of the, if not the most impressive, not only a Super Mario 64 port, but, like, map port in general that I've seen in, in uh, Team Fortress 2. They just, they did a great job with everything. I'm gonna check out the downstairs, too, just to uh, make sure I'm getting everything, but, um, there's not been anything that I've seen so far that is, like, really concerning. All right, here's the carousel room. There's no fire coming out of the walls, which I mean, it, it's not like fire in TF2 is that hard to implement, it's already a thing, but at the same point, it, it, would that be annoying? Yes, so, like, uh, uh, I don't know. It wouldn't be that hard to just attach a flamethrower model to, um, to one of the things, I actually don't remember which boo is supposed to come out of, but, um, there, there's, like... <laughs> The fact that I have to be this nitpicky to find anything to say about this map at all is really a testament to how good they made this map. So I'm just I'm just gonna give this a 10 out of 10. Like honestly, this is one of the best ports I've ever seen. All right, moving on to Hazy Maze Cave, which is another map made by the same guys, Big Boo's Haunt. And um, I mean, because there's like a custom spawn room, I think that should be pretty obvious. I think this guy really knows what he's doing in uh, creating TF2 maps. Uh, one thing that stuck out to me immediately is that there is default logo gravity on this map, which, uh, I don't know if that's a design choice or if that's a functionality choice, but I guess we'll figure it out as we go. Um, there aren't really any enemies to speak of in these hallways, which does make it feel a little bit barren. Same with the flamethrower. Um, usually these are like some hustling and bustling rooms that it just, uh, I can't help but feel a little lonely when I come in here. Uh, same with this room. It's just like, all the floating boxes and stuff that I, I know are like, you, you can port those pretty easily. Um, they just aren't here, so maybe this guy made this map like before he made Big Boo's Haunt. Otherwise, I don't know like what the uh, decision for this would be, but um, overall, I just, I think this is pretty good recreation of the geometry. The lighting feels a little bit off. Like, I don't know. I, maybe I'm just misremembering the game, but for some reason, these walls here feel like they were a different texture in Super Mario 64, like the, the original game, so I don't know what's up with that, but, um, maybe I'm wrong. It's been, it's been long enough that I played the original game that I, I don't actually know for sure. In terms of the actual hazy maze, it looks pretty good. Do I lose health by standing in here, I wonder? 
Okay, I, I suffer drowning damage. I think that's pretty appropriate. Um, they also included uh, little health packs up in the, uh, the little corners, so... Honestly, the integration of the Hazy Maze, I think, has been better than the rest of the map. It's just like, again... Um, with how good Big Boo's Han is, it's like, where is everything? I'm kind of lonely. I want to be able to, like, shoot stupid bats or something. I don't I don't remember which enemies are in here. Bats and moles and other stuff. Um, oh, here's the platform. We can just rock and jump up. This is what they should add to Mario 64 in general, but everything is exactly where I think it should be with this map. Uh, there's not a ton that's, like, really stood out to me negatively other than just the lack of, like, entities. Um... I think with the inclusion of health packs and spawn rooms, though, not only do I think this is a good choice for trade maps, I've actually already played on a trade map where this was a thing, and I, uh, I already had this in another map video, but I wanted to come back and look at it again because I was on that for, like, 15 seconds total, so... You know, it's pretty cool. Now, again, with just them including, like, uh, health and ammo packs where, like, stars and coins and stuff should be, it's just a great choice for playability. I don't have a ton to say about this that I've ar not already said about um, other maps that I've already looked at, so I'm not gonna sit here and repeat myself a ton, but I do wanna go down to the cave room at least. This is really high poly water f compared to the rest of everything. Uh, <laughs> I, w I will say that. It's a little bit uncomfortable. Um... Oh, this actually does work. What's in here? Okay, so this is just a, uh, they added a little shadow star in here, which teleport- Oh, wow! That's a neat warp system, actually. That- that's a cool integration of a star. I'm surprised they didn't add all of the other stars when they added that one. Maybe they looked at it and just said, okay, this wouldn't work as well for, like, other parts of the map if I tried to add warps, but, um, okay, I'll, I'll give the creator of this the benefit of the doubt and say that it was, like, a purposeful choice and not a laziness. I think that, um, it would have been cool to have other warps, but, you know, I'll just, I'll have to take my salt to my grave there. Also, if anyone's wondering where the blue team spawns, they actually spawn in the metal cap room. Um, the spawn is pretty barren. There's not, like, anything interesting in there. I already checked. Um, but yeah, I guess they had Dory, too. This is the one, this is the one creature that's here. It just goes in a circle. It doesn't really do much to interact with you, but I love him. I want to be friends with him. He doesn't really look at me, though, so it's kind of hard to do that. I'll give this map a 9 out of 10, though. I think this is certainly better than, um, Wom's Fortress, but it's not as good as Big Boo's Haunt. Uh, I think the layout of Hazy Maze Cave makes it a little bit better for trade maps, though, uh, just because it's so big and there are a lot of, like, hidden areas that you can go to, but yeah, I don't know. It's a little bit lonely, and I wish they would have added more stuff, but hey, what are you gonna do? So, I looked as hard as I can. I couldn't find any other ports of, uh, Super Mario 64. 64, like, painting worlds, but I did find two more, and, uh, one of them is Peach's Castle. This is supposed to be a trade map. This is, like, one of the few with an actual prefix, and I'm seeing some problems with it already. This isn't, like, a very good port of the outside of Peach's Castle. Um, well, I'll, I'll look around at least. I'll, I'll say that, like, maybe some of these decisions were made for the sake of playability. Probably not, but maybe it was. Um, right now, though, I mean, this was, like, advertised as a Super Mario 64 port, so it's, it's clear that it was supposed to be at least, like, something. So, uh, my complaints with Outside are that, number one, the textures, maybe they used the, I think they used the DS version textures, because I was gonna say, these look, like, really high poly for, uh, the original Super Mario 64. The trees, this is a lazy way to do trees. I know because I've seen it in literally every other map that we've been on, uh, the, the trees, like, having the, uh, the trees always face you is possible. And, um, the geometry also doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, like, what, what is going on here? I don't, <laughs> I'm not really sure. It's not that bad, but it, like, if the textures, if you changed all the textures and you made this a gray grid, I probably would not be able to figure out that this is supposed to be a Super Mario 64 map. Um, the others, like, you could probably figure out eventually. As far as the inside goes, man, this doesn't even teleport me. This map sucks. Uh, it, it's not that bad. Like, they got all the textures right for, um, the inside at least, and the layout's not, like, too bad, but it's just the same. It looks like a weird, like, Chinese knockoff of Super Mario 64. Um, again, if you changed all the textures to gray grids, I probably, I might be able to guess just because of, like, the doors and stuff. Um, can you go in the... Wait, what? What? 
Wait, where is this taking me? I'm so confused. Oh, um, wait, what? Okay, so I guess when you go in the paintings, you just get sent to, like, this box? Let me no clip out of this. What is this supposed to be? There's just, like, there's no point to this. Like, they, they could have made the paintings not work at all, and it probably would have been better. Because at least I would have been, like, mildly disappointed instead of just disappointed and confused. Um, okay, I at least see health and ammo packs. I don't know, though. This doesn't really look like that good of an integration. Um, it, if this was called Mario 64 Peach's Castle, I probably would have been a bit more disappointed because, like, at least right now, you could say this is a Mario 64 inspired map versus just, like, supposed to be a port. I need to, I need to go back and look. Right now, though... It's just not very good. I mean, there's like a lot of stuff that's missing. Um, there's some stuff that's from the original game, but like it feels like it's like half completed and they shouldn't even have like made it a thing yet. Oh, this just kills me if I go in there. It's just like an extra middle finger for trying to explore the map. Like that, that's not good design. If, if you're adding like Easter eggs, they shouldn't kill you. I, I will stand by that notion. You can only go in one of the paintings. The other ones you can't even go in. This is just confusing design all around. Um, they put a lot more detail into the upstairs of the map than the downstairs. And this isn't even accurate either. Like, what is going on here? Where's the clock? This is like the one feature of this room. This just looks like nothing now. They didn't even texture the size of the stairs. <laughs> There's so much wrong with this map that I'm just... It's just so disappointing. What? <laughs> I think this is where the blue team spawns. I was like checking and waiting for players and I spawned up here and I was on blue. But <laughs> there's just like, there's so much wrong with this map. Let me no clip around. Let me make sure that there aren't any extra Easter eggs that I could have missed. Um, probably not, if we're being honest. This is just, it's kind of painful exploring this. It's not, it's not rewarding for me to like fly around and like just explore, which is what a trade map should be. Can you go down here? Kind of. There's, oh, I thought that was, <laughs> I thought that was an Easter egg. It's just texture clipping. Never mind. Yeah, I'm going to give this map like a four out of 10. <laughs> they put in like the bare minimum for any kind of Super Mario 64 maps. If I saw this one first, I might have given it a higher score. I won't lie. It's just like compared to uh, some of the really cool stuff everyone else made, this one just kind of sucks. <laughs> like what the heck? Alright, so the last map that I wanted to take a look at because it was Super Mario 64 themed. Oh, what? Okay, well, I guess we'll have to try these buttons out at the end. This is a Death Run map that is based on Super Mario 64. Um, obviously... It's not gonna be a perfect port. This is more gameplay and like more stylized than anything But I think it's appropriate to show this off because it was a pretty cool looking one that they at least did a, a decent job with so um, Now because I don't have two people it's gonna be a little bit hard to try out uh, Death run and uh, actually play it as it's supposed to be but I think just by like Activating some of the traps you can get a sense of what's going on. So that just removes the bridge. Oh, uh, this Removes the platforms. That's a brutal one actually because these are already moving platforms um, And then I can go wait, what does this do? That blows something up. I don't really know how to play death run. I'll be honest with you uh, If you do play death run you can probably look at this and say like oh wow. Yeah, that's cool. That's a neat trap um, This one just looks mean. Okay, uh <laughs> Wow. Yeah, th this map is like, in terms of something that I'd want to play on, I mean, I don't want to play on Death Run anyway, so my opinion might be biased, but this this one looks like um, a map that's just a little too brutal. Maybe it's just everyone's looking at this and it's like, wow, this is really easy. Never pick this. It's just like an instant win for the runners. But it's just, it's so long and there's so many traps that are just mean. I don't, I, I don't know like what's going on with this. In terms of like something that's actually based on Super Mario 64, I mean, kind of, okay. Like th there's a lot of stuff that I can confidently say like, yeah, this roughly looks like it was meant to be in Super Mario 64. It's just like some of the- they take a lot of creative liberties and I'm not sure how much I'm willing to like get around that yet. Like they at least have this section. It look- it looks like um, they tried to put some stuff that was in there originally, but overall there's a lot of original areas too. And um, it's- it's really hard to rate these like 
<laughs> super objectively because I understand that they're supposed to uh, wait oh wait what is this what is going on <laughs> anyway it's like I, I understand that some sacrifices have to be made in order to make this like work properly as a death run map same with Bob on battlefield it's like the same problems I had there I guess I just don't know like where to draw the line of like th this has a lot of stuff added to where it's almost unrecognizable as a Super Mario 64 map but it's not because they have just enough things for me to be able to say if I didn't know this was a Super Mario 64 map and like if you replaced all the textures and took out the skybox and stuff I w I might be able to draw the connection I just don't know so I'm gonna I'm gonna rate this either a six or a seven frick it six and a half out of ten it's pretty good. I don't play enough Death Run to really give this a great rating, but, um, yeah, I'll leave it there. Let me know in the comments about this one, too. So, anyway, I mentioned in the beginning that the last map I wanted to take a look at was Jolly Roger Bay. Um, I really wish I could have a download link for this. It looks like it was super well done. The problem is that, again, it's just nowhere to be found on the internet. I found, like, the video that's in the background was one video that I found from, like, 2013. If you have a download link, please send this to me. I would love to be able to play on these. Now, as far as download links for all of the maps that are in this video go, uh, all of them are on the workshop. You can feel free to find them yourself, but I'll also include a link to uh, all of them that are on here, except for the Death Run one, because that was on Game Banana. So as far as my final thoughts go, I mean, Big Boo's Hot is the clear winner of this video. Uh, I think Hazy Maze Cave is second place in terms of this looks like it would be fun to uh, run on a trade server, but this this is just such a well done map. Like, honestly, shout out to Litronom for his amazing work in porting everything. Uh, he did such a good job of really every aspect that I'm grading for in these. So um, if he ever sees this video, brother, you, you're a cool guy. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Um, I wanted to do a little bit of an experiment with this. I don't normally do like themed map reviews. I know like not a ton of people even like the map reviews, so we'll see how many views this gets. But if you want me to do another one of these with another specific theme, let me know what you want to see. I'm kind of down for anything. So uh, leave a comment. Let me know what your favorite map was and have a good one.